Most West Virginians know Hoppy Kerchival, the host of Metro News Talk Line, which on a regular basis covers the do doings of the legislature. And Hoppy himself comes to Charleston a couple of days a week. If I recall correctly, it wasn't too many years ago, you were here pretty much every day during the legislative session. Is it less important now or just more tedious? It, uh, <laughs> I, I think it's always important, Bob, and you know that you've covered it for many, many years longer than I have. I think it's very, very important. I think I just maybe ran out of gas and thought I'll come down to, uh, two days a week instead of three or four days a week. But it, it's very important and, and our company, Metro News, is committed to covering it very closely. Because as you know, what happens here affects the entire state. And Metro News has a panoply of stations like West Virginia Public Broadcasting does and probably the only two major news organizations that are still providing regular legislative coverage in terms of what bills are going where and, and, and what's going on and that's changed quite a bit over the years hasn't it? Yeah it has and I think that's unfortunate. I mean uh, again back in your early days of covering the legislature that the, there'd be many many more press people here. Many more daily newspapers would have sent correspondence down here and morning and afternoon papers would have different staffs and it's just not as and TV might have been more committed at that time um, but maybe some of them have moved away a little bit so it's not as um, I don't think the coverage is as intense as it once was maybe when you first started out but it's, that doesn't mean it's any less important it's still very important in terms of over the decades and uh you and I both have a little gray in the hair and what <laughs> hair we have left. But in any event, in terms of over the decades, what do you think are the most critical things that happened here under this dome? I'll, I'll pick out a couple and, and, and give me an excuse if I don't name the biggest. But I, I think when Gaston Caperton was first sworn in and the state had a serious budget problem and he gave his state the state address. And even before the regular session began, he called a special session and had a huge tax increase to try to keep, keep the state out of the red. I think that was gigantic. Um, that's one that stands out to me. Um, another is the times that we've seen these corridors filled with school teachers and staff, you know, chanting and protesting hour after hour after hour and capturing the attention not only of the legislature of the state. I mean, that, that stands out to me. And also to watch as we both have, the transition of a legislature that was completely dominated by Democrats mm -hmm. to the point where there was one Republican in the Senate, Donna Bowley, who's still here, yes. to now being completely dominated by the Republicans, to watch that transition over the years. That's been fascinating. Thinking, if I want to get elected, I need to run as a Republican, which is the exact opposite of what it was a couple decades ago mm -hmm. when the primary decided the outcome in West Virginia, the Democratic primary, especially in Southern West Virginia. Mm -hmm. And do you think it's going to have an impact now that the Republican primary is going to become a closed primary? That's an interesting decision. We'll see what happens in 2026. But that tells me, too, the Republicans have come so far politically in terms of political strength, they now think we don't need the independents when just a, a couple of decades ago they wanted the independence yeah. as they were trying to build their party so I, it's a fascinating decision that they are now saying no to independence when it was the independence that helped them build the majorities that they have now it used to be kind of a standard that on an election year like this one at least five to seven members of the state senate were running for statewide office of some sort and the ones that weren't already running were getting ready to run do you see the same sort of political stepladder that uh, that used to take place here? It doesn't seem that way, does it? Not because to me. You're, you're right. It used to be that someone would become, would work their way up. They'd be in the House for a number of terms or the Senate, a number of terms. Uh, I'm thinking like an Earl Ray Tomlin, for example, yeah. and then an Earl Bob Wise. Okay, it's their turn, mm -hmm. right? Um, and it just doesn't seem to be that way anymore. Mm. Uh, now you see um, the candidates more from from the outside of the legislature. So that pecking order, maybe it'll come back, but right now it doesn't seem like that political pecking order is there like it once was. Have you noticed we're talking about the old days a lot? Have you noticed <laughs> well, that? <laughs> excuse me, but uh, I, for one, am an old person, and uh, you are a veteran broadcaster, and uh, uh, there have been some talk that, uh, that you may be interested in uh, heading into the semi-retirement zone in the not too distant future. What, what, what's your future? I, I think Talk Line would obviously continue, and I'll be, I'll be 69 this month, so, you know, I think about it. You know, I think about it, and, and um, but I tell you what happens, Bob, is that, of course, you're still doing it at the age of 99, so, <laughs> but what, 
I think about it, and you know, we're, none of us are going to live forever. And I, I, I see the, the statue of Robert C. Byrd out here, you know, mm -hmm. and uh, but I, I keep getting drawn back mm -hmm. because I come down and I, 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 I love what happens here. I love the politics. I love the process. You know, and if you, if you do, you do. If you don't, you don't want anything to do with it. And I love mm -hmm. the process. And I see people that I know and like. I mean, look, it's West Virginia. We know everybody, right? And a lot of these people I like and know. And they're, they're not closest friends. We don't exchange Christmas cards, but they're friends. And you say, oh, I saw this person. And I would, if, when and if I retire, I would miss that. I would miss that a lot. Our thanks to Hoppy Kerchival, a guy who you've listened to for decades and decades and gotten much of your information about what's going on under the Capitol Dome. Back to you.